Welcome, welcome to Costa Rica. It's beautiful to be back. It's wonderful to be back. It's an amazing country. It's so beautiful. Everything is a vista. Everything is a view. Nice people, great weather, wonderful fruits. Everything is great. But it took us damn near 48 hours, two full days to get to the point where we are now, which is quite an insane travel. So let me tell you all about it because it's quite a story. So today is Wednesday. And last Sunday, we got up at 3.30 a.m. Spanish time, collected all our bags, collected all our suitcases, threw them in the car, and then we drove for three and a half to four hours to Madrid. Because from Madrid, we would get our straight flight to San Jose in Costa Rica. So we got up really early, threw everything in the car, and started driving. Pitch dark, driving really fast, taking turns in driving. Some of us slept, some of us didn't, and I ended up driving the last bit beautiful ride and at the end like you could see like the sun's coming up behind the mountains and like the countryside of Spain is pretty beautiful in the center so it was really nice so we finally get there and we're dropped off Sophie and me with our suitcases and Jan's suitcase which is Sophie's dad he would fly the next day after us so he would stay a night in Madrid so we get to the terminal hall right with all our suitcases everything and we need to go to a specific amount of checking counters like number 880 or something we get there there's 300 people waiting there I'm like oh yeah okay fine there's only three checking counters open. Well, actually four, but one of them was actually for people who paid a lot of money, like whatever, business premium stuff. So no go for us, so only three open. And it was taking ages, man, like 15 to 20 minutes to get one person through these checking counters. I'm like, what's going on here? So you have these zigzag lines you have to go through before you get to the counter, right? We finally passed through one of these lines and still there's like almost 200 people in front of us. It was, <laughs> was, it? It was taking ages, like, I just saw an amazing bird that I have no idea of what it is. So. We finally get to the end of one of these zip lines after an hour. And this lady opens up the zip lines and tells us, walk around the corner, because there you will find other counters you can use. It'll be a lot quicker. And we're like, thank you, thank you. So we go through, get to that counter. Then we finally realize why it took 15 to 20 minutes per person or sometimes longer to get through this check-in. Because we get there and she wants to see our passports, naturally. Then she wants to see our QR code, which is what you need or getting into Costa Rica. Basically, you need a health insurance, like health insurance, right, for everything going on in the world, which costs about 100 euros per person. And you will upload that to a Costa Rica website and then you get a QR code. You need to show that QR code. It basically shows you that you have a valid insurance to get into the country. So the woman literally looks at the thing and starts zooming in and checking every letter and every like line of text. Like She took a long time. She did that for both of us. Then she says, I want to see your insurances separately. And I'm like, you have the QR code, whatever. So she starts zooming in, pinching in on that, checking everything, took like five minutes, okay, fine. Then she asks, do you have the shot? Like, uh, no. <laughs> then she's like, okay, then I wanna see a test. We're like, okay, fine, we, we have something prepared, right? We had something prepared, but it's bullshit because you don't need it to get into Costa Rica, but whatever, we showed that too, like, everything fine. Then we get to the suitcases. We put the suitcases on, one is too heavy, one is too light, and I only had a carry-on, so I could take that with me in a plane. And we were like, can we even that out, right? Like, one is too light, one is too heavy, can we even that out? No. So you either have to, like, open everything up, reorganize everything. We're like, nah, nah, we've been waiting for so long, so we just had to pay. So we had to pay 100 freaking euros to get that stupid suitcase into the plane. Fine, good, all good. So we finally get through all of that. That was an hour and 40 minutes. So we're finally through, and it, we did a lot quicker because we, you know, go through the line. Then we had to find some food. Uh, for the flight so we started looking for things and you know airport food is never the great thing so you know we started looking for breakfast and then we started looking for other foods we could take with us it took a while but we got some stuff then we wanted to go to the gate then we realized that the gate is in another terminal and the way madrid airport is set up is like the terminal is like two kilometers away like more than a mile so we had to take this little train to get to the terminal we didn't know that and then the trains are like it takes 25 minutes we're like stretching oh no we're gonna miss the flight maybe oh so we were you know going quickly through all of that and then um we finally get there, and they were still checking in, of course, Spain, you know. <laughs> so it was taking quite a while. We get there. She, they want to see the damn QR code again. So we have to show that thing again, and then finally we got in. Everything okay. So then we're finally on the plane, right? But then you have a flight of ten and a half hours. At that point, we were already up for like nine hours traveling nonstop. So having to wait and everything. So ten and a half hour flight. Fine. We're sitting there. Not too much room in these seats, man. Like, I don't know what's up with that, Iberia, but fine. And, uh, yeah, 10 and a half hour flight. It was pretty long. Like, we watched some series, read a book, uh, ate some food. Like, it took really long. But then finally you start to see, like, um, the Dominican Republic on the right of you, like an island, beautiful view. And then finally you get to Costa Rica and San Jose. And we land after about 10 and a half hour flight. So we arrive in San Jose and we get off the plane. Then there is this big line there. We have to wait to get through the QR code check again. But this time they would only let 10 people in 
at once. So groups of 10 would go on to the next hall where the big immigration hall is, where you have to go to like the, the immigration cubes, show your passport, etc. There were freaking 500 people in that hallway. I've never seen it that busy. And they said it will take about an hour and a half to wait. We're like, oh no, man. Like <laughs> at this point, we have been traveling for about like 18, 19 hours and we have to wait again. So fine. So we go into these lines and again, we're safe. Like one of these guys opens up the lines and lets us through and let us go with the nationals to that cube. So that's great. Like wonderful. We got saved. And we get there and the guy looks at our passports, looks at our QR codes again. And then he gives us 87 days of visa and we're like, you can go through. So fine. That took hour and a half. So at this point, we're like 20, 20 and a half hours in of traveling. Then we collect our bags, got some money from the ATM, had to go through check-ins and then we had to get a taxi. So I wanted to get an Uber. Um, and so we got eventually got an Uber and then we got to our little hotel. So we got to the room, checked everything out, was nice, dropped our suitcases in our bags and just went to sleep at like, I think 7 p.m. Costa Rican time after like 22 hours of travel, <laughs> Same. And then the next day we wake up at like 4 a.m. Costa Rican time. And then at like 5.30 or 6 a.m. there was this guy just hacking his machete next to our bedroom window. <laughs> and it was actually a quite a little nice boutique hotel kind of style. Like they had a pool, they actually had a gym. They had like a, uh, a tennis court where we played tennis actually and I got completely destroyed by Sophia like I'm not good at tennis at all. Like she totally, totally schooled me and it was pretty funny because I felt like yeah, yeah I'll do that but no man I couldn't even hit the ball straight like I got completely wrecked. Fine. Then we went to breakfast and it's like the breakfast was at the, at the restaurant there on the, on the property and um, it was basically a steakhouse. So I like I was like mm, a little skeptical but the guy had fruit so we got like four or five platters of fruit between us. We ate that, it was pretty nice, and then we had the rest of the day to us until we would get picked up about 3, 4 p.m. and go to the airport, pick up Jan, and then drive to where we are now. So we decided to go to this mall. This like It's really funny because like it's really hot here and everything, and like look, no snow and everything, but you have like the Christmas lights and like everything there, and like Christmas trees and like Christmas decorations. Pretty funny, it was there last time too. We decided they wanted to get some SIM cards. We were like, nah, we'll get them later. First we'll look for like a raincoat and whatever, stuff like that we might need. Then we get back there and there's like a line of like four or five people. We're like, okay, no biggie took damn near an hour and a half to get in and get our SIM cards and then get out. So yeah, we had to wait a long time again. So finally, after an hour and a half of waiting, finally getting the SIM cards, we were out, we got some fruits at a supermarket, then went back to the Petit Codel, ate some of that, and then Sophie demonstrated the perfect usage of travel cubes. So this is what she sold me, right? Like, you get travel cubes, it's all organized, perfectly little things. And she took them all apart, like spread it all over the room, then she had to rearrange them again. So hey, oh, there you go. And then we got picked up by one of Sophie's dad's friends with his car. And then we drove back to the airport again to pick him up. And then after we got him and picked him up, we drove for about two and a half to three hours through mountain roads and like really, really shabby roads to drop the friend of Sophie's dad off at his house. And it was quite a ride, man. It was pretty beautiful, but it got dark really quickly. And then you were just sitting there for two and a half hours in the car, right? Like, and after the previous day of traveling, like... It was getting pretty tedious, but hey man, can't complain there like in Costa Rica, right? But still. So after two and a half hours, we arrive on top of the mountain where we drop the guy off at his property. Then, Sophie's dad gets behind the wheel and says, now we're gonna drive half hour down and we're gonna go to the eco ranch where we're staying with a friend of mine. We're like, great, wonderful. And <laughs> that bro was like insane, but it got even, even more intense. Like it was straight down, like just like this, like down with the four wheel drive in the pitch dark, like, wobbling about me you know, like all kinds of potholes and like rocks everywhere and like a ravine next to us like insane and at a certain point we had to cross a river in the pitch dark and like we got a little stuck and then we had to get over again like insane drive and we get here like not much to see in the dark and we get to our little cabin over here everything fine two full days of travel like insane and then the next day we wake up here and we open like the curtains and like the most beautiful sunrise experience here like you just slowly see the light coming up on the mountains and everything is drop that gorgeous so so beautiful like there's something about this nature in this country man. it's unbelievable and then we got some breakfast and we started our day and it's been amazing so far. I'll show you what we've been up to in, in coming videos. Like it's so unbelievably gorgeous here, but this is just straight up like the longest travel I ever had. <laughs> it was insane, but 
can't complain when I'm here now. It's it's beautiful. It's wonderful. And just wait till you see what what we've been up to so far. Like it's it's so wonderful. But that trip, insane. So this is me signing out. Hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are. Stay tuned for more. I'm going to show you everything there is to see about Costa Rica because we're going to travel through the entire country while we're here. But for now, I'm just going to enjoy my view here. See you in the next one.